Hello, I'm your host, Jonathan Miller, and today I'm joined by Nancy Lurker, CEO of iPoint Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol EYPT on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. iPoint is a company committed to developing and commercializing therapeutics to improve the lives of patients with serious eye disorders. Nancy, why don't you tell us briefly a little bit more about the company, and also thank you so much for being here today. Jonathan, thank you, and we're very excited about where our company sits right now. We are a biotech uh, ophthalmology company focused on serious retinal, which is back of the eye diseases. And most importantly for your listeners is that we have a major clinical trial uh, study that's going to have top line results um, blinded and read out first part of December of this year. So we're ticking down to this very, very important study. It's 160 patient wow. phase two double blind ILEA controlled, and I'll get into that later, but that's a that's a gold standard study and very nicely sized. So we're very excited about the potential results of that study coming out. That's fantastic news. Now, Nancy, you've been involved in the pharmaceutical and therapeutic space for some time and even sit on the advisory board for the Stanford School of Medicine, Master's Translational Research in Applied Medicine. Tell us more about your background and how you got involved with iPoint and what's the rest of the management team's experience? Yeah, very good question. Well, one of the things that I proud myself on and for the management team is we're all very, very experienced. And one of the things I've learned over the years, because I grew up in both big pharma and then I spent probably the last one third of my career in small biotech. They're very different uh, financial and business ecosystems, uh, though they do overlap. So if you can have experience in both, that really makes you a much more effective executive lead in these companies. Uh, I tend to hire people who are highly, highly experienced. If you look around the executive team, everybody has years and years and years of experience, both in small biotech and then a lot of them in large biotech as well. Uh, importantly, our president and chief operating officer, Dr. Jay Duker, is one of the world's leading retinal surgeons in the world. Uh, he stepped down from being the chairman of ophthalmology at Tufts and came on full time. He has founded a, num a number of ophthalmology companies. So he's very experienced in not only the whole retinal eye space, and he's highly regarded by the top equity fund investors that invest in ophthalmology biotech because they trust his judgment so much. So I'm very proud to have Jay as a part of this team. Anybody can Google him. You'll see how stellar he is. And then the rest of the management team as well. And I've learned over the years you have to have very strong people around you, and you can't let your ego be uh, afraid to hire people smarter than you. So I've got a really smart team around me. In fact, most of them are definitely smarter than me. I couldn't agree more with you. I, I often tell uh, CEOs that I'm interviewing is that the smart companies and the smart executives know that rule of thumb to hire people mm -hmm. smarter than them and, and let them manage the things that they're better at doing than, uh, than we might be. Now, the company has some proprietary technology like the erodible Duracet e-technology. Tell us a little bit more about that and what gives your company a competitive advantage? Good question. So we have our own proprietary uh, retinal drug delivery technology and delivering drugs to the back of the eye is very, very difficult to do. You can imagine. First of all, it's very small space, highly complex, and you cannot screw up a person's vision. <laughs> So what's happened over the years is that in this space that we're in, which is the big retinal eye diseases, I'll rattle some of them off for your listeners, wet AMD, uh, diabetic retinopathy, um, diabetic macular edema, those are the big categories. And they lead to blindness. Mostly they're diseases of the aging and to be diseases of diabetes. Unfortunately, they're growing exponentially in size because of the aging population, and then also because of the incidence of diabetes going up. So these are multi, multi-million patient categories. And I might add, the whole category is over 20 billion in um, uh, sales across the drugs on the market today. The problem is, is that the drugs on the market today are very safe and they're very effective. So I'll name some, Ilea from Regeneron, Lucentis from Genentech, of uh, the Bismol from Babismol, excuse me, from Roche. Those are some of the big ones on the market. And then a generic drug called Avastin. The problem is they all go out to every one, two, or three. Maybe you can get some patients now out to once every four months with eye injections for the rest of your life. Patients don't want to keep coming out. 
and getting their eyes injected into the doctor's office for the rest of their life, every month to once every three or four months. Ours is a once every six month bioerodible implant. That's the Duracert E. It's a platform technology, bioerodible. You can put it in the eye in just a simple injection, just like Alia and Anna Lucentis and Vabismo. You inject it in the patient's eye. Sounds terrible, I know, but unfortunately, that's the way these diseases are treated. But if you can get it once every six months, wouldn't you rather have that? Then go in every month or every other month for the rest of your life. So we're very excited about this. The other key thing to know, one of the critiques that uh, I know investors get asked us is that, well, you know, Regeneron and Genentech are, are huge. They're the big players in the field. How, are, how is little tiny eye point going to go up against the giants in the industry? My answer to that is twofold. Number one, we're actively seeking a partner among the big players in ophthalmology. So once our results come out, if they're positive, I expect we'll fully engage in, in full discussions about an, uh, a launch and clinical phase three collaboration. Number two, the our drug is a different mechanism of action inside our Duracert technology. That different mechanism of action potentially has what's called neuroprotection benefits, where it could protect the eye uh, in different ways than you get with the current drugs on the market. So we don't view ourselves as a head-to-head -head competitor. We're really more complementary. So I envision a day when both drugs are being used. And, and you often find that with these large chronic diseases. So if you look at hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, cancer, Oftentimes, patients are on more than one drug because you want to attack different mechanisms that tackle the disease. And usually you get a much more robust effect and the patients do better. Sounds very promising and definitely much needed, like you mentioned, with the uh, aging population. Now, your industry obviously comes with some challenges uh, like regulatory approvals and clinical trials. Why don't you elaborate a little bit more on how you're addressing challenges in your industry and, uh, and what you're doing to tackle those? Okay, so most importantly for a small biotech company like us, you want to make sure you have enough capital to get yourself to your key catalyst. That is most critical. And then I'll get into the big macro factors. But if you can't tackle the micro factor, which is You've got money to get yourself to the end of your key data readouts and you have a problem. The good news for us is we have over $125 million in cash on our balance sheet uh, as of January of this year. And then we just announced a large deal where we sold off our one commercial asset uh, to one of our partners for $82.5 million in cash. So we've really bolstered our balance sheet. You can do the math on that. Uh, and we, that takes us out till 2025 before we need more cash, well beyond our big catalyst, which is December of this year. So that's important because as we enter into potential negotiations with the big pharma uh, or we do other, we're looking at other potential non-dilutive uh, capital raising ways, we don't want pressure that we have to get a deal done right away because then you end up striking deals that aren't good for the company. So we feel very confident about the fact we're in a good cash position. Plus, we've got this big data readout. And I might want to add for your readers, we actually have two data readouts. Our second study in diabetic retinopathy reads out in second quarter of 2024. So two large, double-blind, phase two clinical trials with a readout in the next, uh, within 12 months. Now, the third thing is, if you look at the macro factors for, for biotech, first of all, we're a highly innovative industry. And you have big swings in the biotech sector. So you either believe on somebody, believe in a company, and you win, uh, or unfortunately, the data readout's negative, you will see the stock go down. So I do want to caution, there's no guarantee our study will be read out positive. However, um, if you look at our company, we're relatively de-risked compared to most phase two studies. And the reason is because our drug delivery technology, Duracert, has been in four FDA-approved drugs already. It's remarkably safe. We estimate over 80,000 patients have this in their eye with a different type of drug, but it's the same delivery device. It's very, very safe. We also had a phase one study where, again, it continued to show its remarkable safety profile. Uh, now, it doesn't mean that we couldn't have some come up in the phase two, but so far, so good. The second point is the active drug that we're using, which is an anti-VEGF, um, that drug was 
uh, run through phase two studies already delivered orally. Unfortunately, these drugs delivered orally can often cause other systemic side effects like GI toxicities, and it did. So that's why we're, they sold it to us or they licensed it to us to deliver it locally. And in that study taken orally, it showed very good efficacy in wet AMD. So we know that the drug, the active ingredient, uh, at least through phase two in humans, showed good activity. Our phase one study delivered locally, it showed great activity and our drug delivery device has been proven over and over again to be safe. So there's no guarantees. I want to stress that as a CEO, I don't ever want to promise. Uh, However, we're relatively more de-risked than your typical phase two. That's fantastic. It sounds like uh, as far as the product pipeline goes and financially, uh, the company's very well positioned. And outside of that, what are some of the main growth drivers in the next three to five years? Yeah, very exciting because our drug delivery technology is really starting to get a lot of recognition now, partly because we have these four other drugs that were out licensed uh, that are on the market today. And if you look, the big one now coming up that we're exploring is in geographic atrophy. I'll name some companies. Uh, Appel has got approval for their geographic atrophy drug. That is another serious eye disease. And again, these are still remain injections every month. Uh, Ipelis, their drug, I believe, can go every other month for some patients. The next one coming up is Iveric. That's another one for GA. They just got sold to uh, Astellas for multiple billions of dollars, really $5 billion, And that's wow. all based on their one geographic atrophy drug. Why are we excited? Because we're looking at potentially taking those complement inhibitors and putting them in our drug delivery technology and getting patients out, hopefully in this case, maybe once every three or four months. That would be a huge improvement over once every one month. And these are gigantic categories again, multi-billion dollar blockbuster drugs. So that's the second, the other area we're looking at. And then as we continue forward, we're looking at neuropathic, uh, other uh, oncology diseases in the eye, and other diseases that you need to have local delivery of drugs into the eye. So we have a platform that we can continue to build on. That's fantastic. It sounds like you have a really strong strategy in place. Uh, Where can investors go to find out more about the company and what's the best way to reach you? Okay, so I'd say two things. Uh, Go on our website, www.ipointpharma.com. You can go to the investor relations section and on there you can find our all the latest presentations. Look at our IR presentations. You can also go to the SEC filings on there. The 10K, 10Qs are there. You can read all that. Uh, as for contacting us, contact our, our investor relations firm is on there, Stern. You can reach out to them. Their uh, address and contact information is on there. And they can certainly fill you in more about the company. Uh, If you want to take a large enough position, of course, I will always get on the phone as well. Uh, But there's a lot of information out there. And I just want to stress again, we've got a big catalyst coming up. Very excited about it. No guarantees. But as usual, as a a CEO, I'm pretty optimistic about our odds of it uh, potentially reading out positive. So uh, we got a lot going on this year and a lot of potential upside. But again, no guarantees on a phase two readout but it's something that your investors should should certainly look at. Absolutely. And it certainly sounds like you have a lot of things to be optimistic about. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, I would just say, take a look at the whole retinal eye disease space. It's It's a booming area right now. It's one that a lot of companies are starting to really take a deep dive on. Uh, for the large strategics, because they know this area is going to continue to grow. Unfortunately, these diseases are just going to grow in incidence around the developed world because everybody's getting so much older and these eye diseases are terrible eye diseases. So we're really, uh, our company is an area that is highly innovative, but also one that provides a lot of benefit to society. So just really dive into this space. It's a fascinating area with a lot of potential upside over the coming years. Fantastic. Nancy, thank you again so much for being with us here today. Again, the company is iPoint Pharmaceuticals, ticker symbol EYPT on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. Until next time. Thank you, Jonathan.